Hello! The purpose of this video is to show you how to set up the QPCR software on a Step On Plus instrument for QPCR analysis of soil transmitted helminths in stool extracts. The software might be slightly different if you're using a more current instrument, so please adjust as needed. This video includes the assignment of DNA standards as tenfold serial dilutions for absolute quantitation of target DNA in unknown samples. The plate setup includes 39 samples in duplicate and 5 standards and non templing controlled in triplicate in a 96 well plate. Let's start by setting up the software. We're using the advanced setup from drop down menu the new experiment and start by adding experiment name. The username and comment sections are optional. Suggesting here your experiment bar, it would be good to add project name, assay name, which parasite you're screening for, sample numbers, your name, and perhaps the date of the run. Make sure you pick the right instrument with the right platform, 96 wells in our case, and choose quantitation standard curve. The reagents we have been using are the Tachman ones, we'll share the published references at the end, and we run the cycle for nearly two hours to standard run. Now for the plate setup. First tab, define the targets and samples. Type the name of the assay and choose the right reporter and choose none if there is no quincher. For all the STHs and the control included, use FAM as a die and none of, as the quincher. Then you need to define the samples, 1 to 39, the DNA standard concentrations and the non template control in this instance. There is a way to load the sample order automatically, we'll share this way in the SOP, but you still need to assign the samples to the wells manually. Choose the tab Assign Targets as Samples, highlight the entire plate layout and click and assign the target of choice. Click on the button saying define your standards. Leave the number of points as 5, the number of replicates as 3, add the right starting quantity based on STH specific sampling calculations from the SOP and change the serial factor to 1 to 10. Then click on Let me select wells and highlight the wells G7 to H9 and click apply. Click yes and then close. The software will automatically select the standards and adjust the quantity for you. Highlight the last three wells and mark them as NTC from the taskbar. Now you have to assign the sample names for every two replicates or wells. Once you're finished, go to Run Method, change the volume of the reaction to 10 microliters, that's the lower the software can go, even though we're running 7 microliter reactions, and the temperature at the cycling stage to 59 Celsius. Then go back to your screen and you can save this whole setup as a template or .edt file. Next time you're running the same samples, you can use the saved template, but do not forget to change the name of the run, the target, and specifications regarding the copy numbers in the standards if needed. The machine will not let you run the plate unless you save your run. Press run, and that's it! Now I'm going to show you the results from an older run. From the Analysis tab, you can check the Amplification plot, the Standard Curve, the Multi-Component plot, and the QC Summary. In the Multi-Component plot, the passive die should stay fairly steady throughout the cycling protocol. The QC Summary will give you any informative flags related to lack of amplification or amplification in the negative controls, deviation between replicates, or any issues with the passive die, to name a few. Going back to the standard curve, your efficiency should be between 90 to 110 percent if the product is doubled after every cycle with no inhibition present. If you change the plot color by sample, then you can see if the quantitation for the sample test is positive for that target fall within the range of the curve, hence the quantitation is more accurate. Any samples falling outside of the standard curve in either end should be retested. The software has a good sense of threshold adjustment. Always ensure the bar is at the beginning of the exponential phase. If not, adjust accordingly and click Analyze after you finish.
After every run, save again your file and export the results in an XLS format in your folder.